this time I'd like to welcome everyone to the Town of Lexington Council meeting. This meeting is being held at Town Hall Monday evening, July 12th, 2021. This meeting is being broadcast live and will be replayed several times over the week on the Town's Cable Information Channel 1301 and will also be available for viewing on the Town's website. I'm Steve McDougall, the Mayor of Lexington, and this time I'd like to introduce my fellow Council members. To my left is Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Good evening. To her left is Council Member Todd Carnes. Good evening. To his left is Council Member Steve Baker. Good evening. To my right is Council Member Kathy Manis. Good evening. To her right is Council Member Ron Williams. Good evening. To his right is Council Member Todd Lyle. Good evening. At this time, I'd like to ask Council Member Steve Baker to offer invocation for tonight's meeting. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Father God, we just come before you this evening. We thank you for all of the blessings you pour out on our community. And um, we ask that you continue to do that. And please give us wisdom as we do the town's business. And um, we lean on you and we need you uh, to make good decisions. It's in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Baker. This time, would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? This time I will call the council meeting to order. We'll move into deletions on the agenda. Are there any deletions of items on tonight's agenda? Mr. Uh, we want to move number eight back to the work session for additional information. Number eight in that new business. New business number eight. We'll delete that off of the agenda, please. And then we wanted to move and new business number three to number one. Yes. Moving new business number three to new business number one, which would place number one and number two at the two and three spot. Everybody follow that? The reason we're moving uh, number three to number one is because number three needs to be voted on before number two, which would be the new number two and new number three before they get voted on. So it just made sense to put number three in the number one position. Everybody clear? There's mud. <laughs> Very good. We'll move into presentations. I first want to acknowledge the many citizens who volunteer their time on the town of Lexington boards and commissions. Several of them have served for many years and they're recognized at our annual boards and commissions dinner in the fall. Their dedication to the town of Lexington is a very much valued and appreciated opportunity that they share with us. Our first presentation this evening will be a proclamation of recognition presented to a citizen who has served on our planning commission for almost 20 years. This is for Mr. Keith Frost. If you'll join us at the podium, Mr. Frost, we're gonna to continue to shine some light on you. If you'll bear with me, I'd like to present you with a proclamation. This is a proclamation of the mayor and council for the town of Lexington, recognizing Keith Frost for service to the community. Whereas, Citizen participation on town boards and commission is vital to the town council's effort to improve the town and make Lexington a better place to live and work for all citizens. And whereas Keith Frost was appointed to the town of Lexington Advisory Committee in May of 2002 and was later appointed to the Planning Commission in November of 2002. And whereas Keith Frost has served admirably on the Town Planning Commission for nearly 19 years and has served as chairman of the commission since July of 2007. Whereas during his term, Keith has assisted in reviewing and approving many successful development projects within the town. Whereas he has been a staunch supporter and protector of citizens, homes, and residential property within the town of Lexington. 
and whereas due in part to his efforts of Keith Frost, the town of Lexington continues to remain a great place to live, work, and do business. And whereas Keith Frost is resigning from his position as Planning Commission Chairman and leaving his seat on the commission after nearly 19 years. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Mayor and Council for the town of Lexington that Keith Frost is hereby recognized, congratulated, and commended for his outstanding service to the town of Lexington and that the town council expresses its thanks for his dedication and commitment to the betterment of the town of Lexington for all citizens. Proclaim this 12th day of July, 2021, Steve McDougal, Mayor. Keith, thank you very much for everything you've done. Thank you. And I'll, I'll be brief. Um, this is wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, I've enjoyed the 19 years that I've served. Um, I am actually moving out of town, which is why I'm leaving. Thank you. Uh, so, so, uh, but we're not far. Uh, we're only, as I told John, only about three parcels and a quarter mile away. So um, one day maybe. Uh, but I've enjoyed it. This is my hometown. Lived here all my life. Um, so uh, the opportunity to serve has been humbling. Uh, I have appreciated every bit of it. Thank you for what you guys do, uh, the support you've given the Planning Commission, and especially thank the members of the Planning Commission uh, past and present for what they do. It's uh, sometimes a thankless job. It's sometimes not easy, uh, but it is very worthwhile and, and to appreciate the opportunity. So well, thank we you certainly appreciate you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Our next two presentations this evening will be from Major Matt Davis. The first one tonight is the 2020 VIPS, so very important people that help us volunteer of the year award. Ms. Melissa Woods. Melissa, welcome. Mr. Mayor and Council, thank you. On behalf of Chief Green, it's my pleasure to present Ms. Melissa Woods with the 2020 VIPS of the Year Award. Melissa came to us in 2012 after completing the Citizens Academy and since then has volunteered for more than 450 hours and over 100 events. Wow. Wow. She is typically the first one to arrive and the last one to leave. She always beats me there, I know. Um, through COVID-19, though COVID-19 brought challenges to us in our events last year, Melissa was there for nearly all of our Toys for Tots events, which was our biggest um, campaign yet. She braved wind, rain, and cold to make sure there was uh, to support nine collection events, volunteering for over 30 hours during the Toys for Tots last year. Melissa has impressed our staff with her strong work ethic, caring heart, friendliness, and she deserves this award for her selfless, selfless dedication to the VIPS program and to the town of Lexington community. So with that, I'd like to present you Ms. Ms. Woods with her award. Very good. Mr. Mayor, if you come down and take a picture with us. Yes, sir. Let's so much um it's a pleasure to work with everybody you guys are an amazing group of people and it's just an honor to be part of the group very good congratulations our next presentation this evening is for the south carolina law enforcement network dui officer of the year mr sean lugbug major davis mr mayor and council again on behalf of chief green it's my honor to present patrolman first class sean ludwig of the traffic safety unit to the, with the town of lexington to the Town of Lexington Council as he is recently awarded the South Carolina Department of Public Safety DUI Officer of the Year Award. 
for his work during the 2020, the year of 2020. Sean Ludwig is a dedicated to safer roadways in the town of Lexington, and since joining the traffic unit, he has completed over 400 hours of training to become one than less to become one of less than 100 traffic safety instructors in the state of South Carolina. During 2020, he wrote over 750 citations, made 26 arrests for driving under the influence, and participated in the annual collaborative learning exercise with River Bluff High School students of impaired and distracted driving. Sean Lowick continues to work with our DUI prevention programs, which promote designated drivers and gives options for getting home safely at the end of the night. Congratulations to Patrolman First Class Sean Ludwig. person, but um, I want to appreciate and thank the uh, Town of Lexington Police Department for allowing us for even during, 20, during 2020, the pandemic, uh, to realize that there's still work that needs to be done in the community and there's still people out there that unfortunately aren't doing the best, so I appreciate them to allow us to still do our job and understand that we still have a job we need to do. So, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Our last presentation this evening will be from Mike Still, representing Special Olympics. Mike, are you here? Come on, step forward. Glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Mr. Mayor, um, I'm with Special Olympics South Carolina, as you said. I'm the Director of Law Enforcement Torch Run Operations here. Basically, what that means is I have the coolest job in the world. Certainly I get to work do. with law enforcement officers to raise money for Special Olympics. Here in South Carolina, we serve over 30,000 athletes with, with intellectual disabilities. Pre-COVID, the men and women of Law Enforcement Torch Run raised over a million dollars for Special Olympics, which is unbelievable. And I want to tell you that Lexington Police Department is one of the top 10 fundraising agencies in the state of South Carolina, South Carolina raising over $25,000 a year. Wow. What an accomplishment, right? It is, certainly. So one of our annual events that Law Enforcement Torch Run puts on is the Lake Murray Polar Plunge. That's where police officers, teachers, crazy people in the community raise money to actually jump into Lake Murray in February, needless to say. <laughs> so this past year, as you all know, with COVID, everything was different. Uh, we were freaking out, thinking we couldn't even do the event. But lo and behold, the, the law enforcement officers got together and still held the uh, polar plunge. And Lexington Police Department was the top fundraising agency. Now, this year, which is... You would think things would fall off, but Lexington Police Department raised over $6,000. In fact, they almost raised $7,000, 6700 and some change. So we wanted to award them tonight with the top fundraising uh, team award for the Lake Murray Polar Plunge, and we actually have a few uh, awards to give away. So they're their top fundraising team. Then we had the top fundraising individual, which was, I believe, Detective, is that correct? Right? Kate, Caitlin Vor, Voravuti, uh, and she raised almost $1,700 herself. Wow. So we want to recognize these guys, and the Chief's not here, so Major, if you'll accept this uh, award. We usually don't give this, but we thought this was unbelievable what the officers did. So this year, the officers challenged Chief Green to get involved itself. They wanted him to take the polar plunge. He said, no way, unless, <laughs> unless you raise $5,000. Wow. And lo and behold, they raised only $7,000. Chief Green plunged. So we have an award for him. And there's no doubt, nobody can argue that on February 13th, Chief Green was the coolest, <laughs> <laughs> the absolute coolest chief in the state of South Carolina. So I have those awards to, uh, to, to recognize Lexington Police Department. Mr. Mayor, would you come down and take Absolutely, a picture with yeah. us? I think those police officers need to challenge the mayor next year.
Just for the record, we think our chief is always the coolest chief. <laughs> Yeah, what a wonderful um, presentation this evening, all those officers. I tell you, we are surrounded with some really superstars in that department. It's just incredible um, how well that department is staffed. Matt, thank you very much. Congratulations. That's a big deal. At this time, I will have a vision plan update for July 2012. The Gibson Pond is full of water. Y'all, y'all, y'all are welcome because I snuck down there and screwed that thing shut. <laughs> Sorry, Keith, but I was waiting on DHEC and a piece of paper. <laughs> God was trying to fill it up, and they were letting all the water run out of it. So we're glad that it is full of water, and the park will be opening very soon. If you haven't at least driven by. You're missing out. The new bridge is in. It's 147 feet long. Yeah. And the dam is quite impressive. We have now have waterfall in Lexington. It's really nice. The park will be frequented. It will be a frequented destination. And we're glad to finally have it back since the 2015 floods. The requests for proposals are due for the downtown wayfinding signage in July. We expect to select a vendor shortly after that to create more than a dozen signs for the first phase of this project. The signs will be placed in the downtown area to help point people to different destinations inside the town limits. Also, work will begin in the near future for the walking trail that will wrap around the Old Mill Pond. Once completed, it will be one mile long and lit all along the trail and will add to the list of things to do in the downtown area. These are just a few of the projects that are a result of the town's vision plan, which can be read on our website at www.lexsc.com. At this time, we will have a traffic update from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Work continues along North Lake Drive on the Harmon Street portion of the project. Please be aware of construction in this area. SCDOT will be repairing asphalt on Old Cherokee Road behind the Walmart. The road work will start in the coming weeks. Brett, will we be putting something on Facebook page and everything for that when it's going to start? Okay. As part of the final phase of our adaptive signalization system, both daytime and nighttime work continues along 378 and Sunset Boulevard. Please use caution in this area. SCDOT will conduct nighttime paving along South Lake Drive from Maiden Lane to Cinnamon Hill Lane in the next couple of weeks. If you're aware of a traffic signal issue, unsafe roadway situation, or a pothole that needs repair, please call 803-358-7273 and let us know. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, sorry, I lost my spot. Give me just a second. This time we'll move into public hearings. Speakers are limited to five minutes. Our first public hearing this evening is final reading of an ordinance for sale of town property at 103 West Main Street. Is there anyone here who wish to speak to that? Lisa, thank you. Y'all take care. Hearing none, we'll move on to item number two. This is final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 5423-03-003 located at 110 Mill Street. Anyone here wish to speak to that? Hearing none, that concludes our public hearings for this evening. We'll move right into old business. Our first item of old business is from Council Member Kathy Manus. This is final reading of an ordinance for sale of town owned property at 103 West Main Street. Council Member Manus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. A private company has answered, answered an RFP for the town owned lot next to Aladia's restaurant. The company proposes uses similar to the proposed for the Aladia's building. The parcel consists of approximately 0.2 acres and is shown on the attached drawing. I make a motion for final reading approval. Ms. Manus makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. 
Mrs. Livingston seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Todd Carnes. This is final reading of an ordinance <coughs> for sale of town property near Stony Creek Subdivision. I believe we were going to punt this one to Mr. Ron Williams. Mr. Carnes has something he'd like to say. No, another one. Not that one. Not this one? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I, mis <laughs> I misunderstood. No problem. This one is Council Member Todd Carnes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Michael and Tracy Farnham have expressed interest in purchasing town owned property behind the Stony Creek subdivision. The property consists of 4.03 acres and is largely unbuildable. Property was donated from the developer of the subdivision. The prospective buyers are own adjacent property. Sales price is $18,000. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for final reading approval of this town property. Mr. Carnes makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of old business is from Council Member Ron Williams. This is final reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County Tax Map number 5423-03-003 located at 110 Mill Street. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Ryan Property Solutions, LLC, owns a parcel at 110 Mill Street and has petitioned to annex the property. A single-family home is located on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned protected residential, and Mill Street is classified as a local road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their June meeting and recommended the same zoning and road classification for this parcel. I make a motion for first re oh, excuse me, final reading approval. Mr. Williams makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Maynard seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. That concludes our business in old business. I'll move right into new business. Remembering we moved item number three to item number one. This is item number one of new business is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. This is first reading of an ordinance to approve a planned unit development on Lexington County tax map number 5596-02-032 and 5596-02-033 located in the 4800 block of Augusta Road. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. JCF Living is requesting approval of a planned unit development on two parcels located in the 4800 block of Augusta Road and along Dooley Road. The total PUD area is 62.76 acres. It will consist of an apartment project occupying 52.2 acres on the rear of the site and two commercial outparcers along Augusta Road. The apartment por portion of the PUD will have 256 units located in 140 duplex or single buildings. The remainder of the PUD incorporates the two commercial out parcels. The type of commercial use that will occupy these parcels has not been determined, but they will meet all traditional zoning and land development requirements. I make a motion to deny this project. Ms. Livingston makes a motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Corns seconds the motion. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Very good. That motion is to deny. So, Mr. Poole, um, I believe we should table item number, original item number one and two, which would be item number two and three. Um, and maybe you should reach out to that property owner and see if they're still wanting to uh, annex. If they are, we can put it back on. Um, no sense in annexing it this time if if this is not going to happen. Yes, sir. Sound like a plan? Yes, sir. Very good. Yes. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. She was a no. They were calling me already about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
following me already. I'm sorry. I thought that was all. Madam Clerk, are you clear? Everything? Okay. Yes, all right, so we're going to table item two and three. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. This is first reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County TAPS map number 004200-02-033, located in the 100 block of Nightingale Court. Council Member Manis. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. As a brief uh, matter, I want to make sure I'm recusing myself. I have an interest in this transaction. My firm does. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. He has the form. Mr. Cunningham, thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. I'll be recusing as well. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Ms. Maness. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Frank Baltnight and Martha Williamson own 17.5 acres located in the 100 block of Nightingale Court and have petitioned to annex the property. A 66-lot subdivision is being planned on this and an adjacent lot. Properties in the town near this one are zoned protected residential and protected residential too. Nightingale Court is classified as a local road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their June meeting and recommended protected residential zoning from the property and local road classification for Nightingale Court. I make a motion for first reading approval. Ms. Manis makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. I don't see. I'm yep. Very good. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Ron Williams, this is first reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 004200-02-031, located at 167 Nightingale Court. Court. Yes, sir, Mr. Lyle. Same, same reason this, this property is part of that same plan, and my firm has a uh, financial interest in that transaction. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. Sir, Mr. Mayor, it's the same project. I'll be recusing as well. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Very good. Mr. Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Rosa Hendricks owns 14.9 acres located at 167 Nightingale Court and has petitioned to annex the property. A 66-lot subdivision is being planned on this and the adjacent lot. The properties in the town near this one are zoned uh, protected residential and protected residential too. Nightingale Court is classified as a local road. Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their June meeting and recommended protected residential zoning for the property and local road classification for Nightingale Court. I'll make a motion for first reading approval. Mr. Williams makes a motion. Is there a second? A second. Ms. Manus seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Todd Carnes. This is first reading of an ordinance annexing Lexington County tax map number 003420-01-31 located at 140 Pilgrim Point Drive. Council Member Todd Carnes. <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Barry J. Bernstein owns a parcel located at, the, at 140 Pilgrim Point Drive and has petitioned to annex the property. A single family home is located on the site. Properties in town near this one are zoned protected residential. And Pilgrim Point Drive is classified as an RL6 road. The Planning Commission reviewed this annexation during their June meeting and recommended the same zoning and road classification for this parcel. So Mr. Mayor, I make a motion for first reading approval. Mr. Carnes makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mr. Williams seconds the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Steve Baker. This is first reading of an ordinance to adopt an updated model business license ordinance and standard rate classification. Mr. Baker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The South Carolina General Assembly enacted a comprehensive standardization of business licensing which will become fully implemented statewide on May 1, 2022. The new law provided in part the following. 
a standard business license year and due date, a uniform set of rate classes statewide utilizing updated NAICS codes, a statewide internet portal for renewal and payments, the town needs to adopt the updated class schedule and rebalance rates in accordance with state law and adopt the updated model business license ordinance to be effective May 1, 2022. This process must be completed prior to the renewal season, which begins in early 2022. Rates will be adjusted prior to final reading to reflect the results of rebalancing. I make a motion for first reading of an ordinance to adopt the updated model business license ordinance and class schedules. Mr. Baker makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Lyle seconds that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Todd Lyle. We are going to move this one to our next meeting. Yep. We did it That's right. earlier. Our next item is from Mayor Pro Tem Hazel Livingston. This is ratification of a resolution supporting the MASC Retail Recruitment Training Program. Ms. Livingston. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The town of Lexington has been asked to consider participating in the MASC South Carolina Retail Recruitment Training Program. An article describing the program is attached. Also attached is a re resolution which was passed by emergency phone vote due to the application deadline. The resolution was required to be in the MASC. MASC office by July the 2nd. Ratif this is, I make a motion for ratification of the phone vote approving the resolution in the program fee of $5,000 if the town is selected to participate. Very good. Ms. Livingston makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Baker seconds that motion. Please vote as you did on the phone. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I have one question. Yes, Ms. Manis. So I read about this in, in what y'all provided to us, and it says that we would um, have a person from the town that would go to this. Do you have an idea who that would be? Um, so I was thinking that Johnny and I and Lauren would attend because marketing is a very big part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, But it's not full price for everybody, full price for first person, and then it's greatly reduced. Okay. I think there's four classes, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Manis. Our next item of new business is from Council Member Kathy Manis. This is the Regional Gateway Projects. Ms. Manis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The Midlands Business Leadership Group is attempting to start a highway interchange beautification project. This one includes several interstate interchanges. Airport Boulevard Gateway, a one-mile stretch beginning at I-26 at I and SC-302, continuing to the Airport Expressway, the city of Casey and the town of Springdale. Fort Jackson Gateway, I-77 and Forest Drive in the city of Columbia. Lexington Gateway, I-20 and US-1 in the town of Lexington. Harbison Gateway, I-26 and Harbison in the city of Columbia. Downtown Connector Gateway, I-20 and SC-277 in Richland County, I-20 and I-26 in Lexington County and Richland County, I-20 and I-77 in Richland County, and I-77 and I-26 in the city of Casey. The goal is to foster a spirit of regionalism while improving the Midlands chances of landscape economic development opportunities. The first interchanges to be improved are the Airport Gateway and Fort Jackson Gateway, MBLG has set a goal of $1.3 million to construct the first two interchanges. They have raised $1.2 million thus far. They are asking lo local governments to participate in a pro rata share of the maintenance costs based on their population. If the town chooses to participate, our share would be approximately $2,000 per interchange as they are constructed with a maximum of $16,175 annually once all are constructed. Local governments that have committed to participate at this time are Lexington County, Richland County, City of Columbia, City of Casey, City of West Columbia, and the Town of Springdale. Further information and details are attached. I make a motion for approval to enter an IGA for the Regional Gateway Project. 
Ms. Manus makes a motion. Is there a second? second. Ms. Livingston seconds a motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Our last item of new business is from Councilmember Todd Carnes. This is the Town Appointee to Capital Project Sales Tax Commission. Councilmember Carnes. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Lexington County is creating a Capital Project Sales Tax Commission and is advising the Town of Lexington that it may appoint one member to the commission. According to state law, the commission must be comprised of six members. Three of those members are selected by the county and three by the municipalities. Those selected by the municipalities must be residents of an incorporated municipality in Lexington County. The text of the capital project sales tax statute is attached. The commission will be charged with compiling a project proposal for a countywide referendum on the tax. The proposal must be for specifically identified projects intended to be funded by a potential one cent capital project sales tax. The proposal must also identify an ending date for the collection of the tax, which can be collected no longer than eight years pursuant to state law. All potential projects must be identified in the proposal before it can go to a referendum. The text of the capital project sales tax statute is attached. Mr. Sammy Hendricks, who serves on the town's planning commission, has previously served in this capacity, as this is not the first time this commission has been assembled. It is recommended that Mr. Hendricks be appointed to serve again. So, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve Mr. Sammy Hendricks to serve on the Capital Project Sales Tax Commission for the duration of the commission on behalf of the town of Lexington. Mr. Carn makes a motion. Is there a second? I second that. Ms. Maynard seconds the motion. Mr. Poole, I believe you have something you'd like to add. Yes, Mr. Mayor, if it um, meets council approval, I'd like to request that the motion be modified to allow Mr. Hendricks to serve on the planning commission up until the first meeting, um, not make this appointment immediate, um, because it might be a month or two before they actually have a meeting, and he has expressed interest to serve on the planning commission up until he absolutely has to stop. Very good. Mr. Carnes, do you agree with that? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Amends that motion. Ms. Maynus, do you second it? I do second that. Ms. Maynus seconds the motion. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. And thank you to Sammy Hendricks for agreeing to do that again for the town of Lexington. This time we'll hear announcements from Council Member Ron Williams. Mr. Williams. Thank you, sir. We hope everyone enjoyed the town of Lexington's fireworks display and held uh, music held Friday before Independence Day. Thanks to everyone for coming out. Uh, the Market at Ice House has been very busy every Saturday morning. Don't miss out on all the great vendors and music. The market will continue to be at the Ice House Pavilion from nine to one every Saturday through September with the exception, of course, of the past July 3rd. Uh, there are many events and concerts scheduled at the Ice House Amphitheater. So I wanna let you know about a few that are happening in July. For a complete list of concerts and events, you can always visit icehouseamphitheater.com. This Thursday, July the 15th, join us for the uh, Animalia and Random Act of Kindness at 7.30. It's a double fun time for the family. Dr. Knows a Lot will explore a whimsical world in Animalia, which uh, includes action-packed dancing and circus acts. The cast of Random Act of Kindness will demonstrate their love for each other and show the audience their impressive skills in dance and circus acts. Tickets can be purchased at uh, icehouseamphitheater.com and are $25 for VIP tickets, $20 for general admission, $10 for ages three to 10, and two and under get in for free. Uh, come warm your heart and be entertained Thursday, July the 15th. Uh, this Friday, July the 16th, you've got to come out for this free uh, concert starting at 7.30 featuring the local boys. They're a huge uh, bluegrass band who have roots in traditional music and have evolved from old time music, bluegrass, country, and rock and roll. They have performed at the Merrill Fest for the past 22 years and have hosted the Plaza stage with the late Tut Taylor. They also participated in an outreach program that brings music to our surrounding area schools. Uh, so don't miss out. This will, uh, there will also be uh, beer, wine, soft drinks, and water food vendors available for purchases at the event. On July 23rd, we'll have Flannel Fest uh, back at the Ice House Amphitheater. Uh, gates will open at 6 p.m. and the music will continue until 10. Music will be uh, by 
Stone Temple Pilots, Nirvana, and Alice in Chains. And we'll feature Core, a Stone Temple Pilots tribute, uh, Heart Shaped Box, uh, and Grind, an Alice in Chains tribute. Tickets are $12 and can be purchased at icehouseamphitheater.com. Council will meet again on August the 16th at 6 p.m. for council work session and regular council meeting. On behalf of the mayor and my fellow council members, we'd like to thank you for watching your council in action tonight. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Very good. Are there any questions from the news media this evening? Hearing none, any public comments regarding tonight's agenda? Hearing none, that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you for watching the town council meeting for the town of Lexington. This meeting was held at town hall on Monday evening, July 12th. 2021. A recording of this meeting will be aired on the town's information cable channel 1301 several times during this week, and the video will be available on the town's website at lexsc.com. Without objection, we are adjourned.